Good afternoon, my name is Alina Shoutsova. I'm an immigration attorney from Brooklyn, New York. In today's live Facebook presentation, I would like to talk to you about recent news regarding USCIS or the Department of Homeland Security proposal to expand department's um, legal authority to collect various DNA, various biometric uh, biometrics uh, samples from those who are filing for uh, immigration benefits in the United States. So in this video, I would like to talk about the proposal and about what type, what new types of various um, biometrics um, can be collected, what, what's in the proposal and how it may affect a person who is filing for various immigration benefits. So thank you for joining me today, guys. Hi, Azim. Um, I'm going to provide my point of view on the situation and what's there to come. So first of all, um, you know, we just received news that uh, about a week ago that USCIS, Department of Homeland Security, would like to, in addition to fingerprinting, would like to also start collecting other um, biometrics from, from the people who are filing for the benefits. So currently, almost for almost for all immigration benefits, a person has to uh, provide fingerprints. Okay, so fingerprints is one of the uh, biometrical identifications that USCIS is using. And how they're using it, of course, I personally don't really know, but I can suspect the first thing that they're doing is they run those fingerprints in the FBI and other databases to see if there is a hit or a match to see if a person ever has been arrested, committed a crime, ever been deported, right? So that's how it's been used. Now, about the DNA testing. DNA testing currently is not required for most of the applications related to family uh, sponsorship. Meaning that if a person is filing for the son or daughter, a US citizen, for example, or, or permanent resident for their child, it's not a, a routine requirement that the DNA examples would be collected and analyzed. Also, you may be aware, if you're interested, <clears throat> that DNA, uh, DNA examples sometimes do not provide conclusive results and, uh, at, at least in courts, for various purposes, may be challenged. But that's beyond, beyond, beyond the point. The point is that it seems Department of Homeland Security would like to have that DNA testing more like a routine procedure uh, for family-based immigration, okay? So um, it is implemented actually currently almost on a regular basis for some regions. For example, in my personal experience in helping clients, I know that DNA testing is very uh, often used in connection with family-based petitions. And of course, family-based petitions, not spouse, not spousal petitions. We're talking about um, when somebody is sponsoring their child, right? Or son or daughter, children, somewhere where we can establish using DNA that people are related. So for example, in Yemen, in Uzbekistan, uh, when um, somebody is trying to sponsor their children, DNA is almost always required by the consulates. And I guess the rationale behind it is to combat fraud, to make sure that the person who you're sponsoring is, really is related to you. Not really sure how it's going to affect um, um, adopt, adopted children or children who are being born to parents that were conceived in using uh, various reproductive technologies. But for a regular person, let's say, uh, I believe what's going to happen is that, um, what's going to happen is that, you know, it may increase the costs of your application. And uh, the result of course also is that your DNA samples, even though the Department of Homeland Security says that they will not be storing raw DNA, examples, but they will be storing the results of the DNA. So still, you know, it's basically you will be sharing your DNA with the law enforcement, kind of sort of, right? 
and they will have access to it, potentially sharing it with the other law enforcement agencies. And this is a big point of concern for uh, human rights organizations. That's why they are against the proposal. Okay, specifically, I believe uh, American Civil Liberties Union presents a strong opposition to the new uh, proposal to expand uh, various uh, biometrical identification collection of various samples. So we're going to see what's going to happen. I know that, as I stated, DHS already is collecting or requiring, suggesting, they make a suggestion which you cannot refuse to produce the DNA examples in certain in certain cases. The way it also works, by the way, you cannot use just any lab when you do that. Um, it has to be a lab approved by USCIS to process those samples. That's very important, okay? And there is a very rigid procedure as to how you are uh, providing those samples. So I think if the proposal will be implemented, the procedure for providing of the samples will be very, uh, regulated okay very important very very strict to avoid any potential um, fraud but also they just proposing to fingerprint uh, everyone now including children under 14 years old i'm not really sure what you know what particular usage fingerprints of a two-year-old would, would would bring to the government but uh, that's the current proposal to basically fingerprint everyone, including kids, including kids under 14 years old. Um, now, in their proposal, they do state that uh, the collection of the samples are not going to affect immigrants. I believe that like everything else, eventually it will, because it necessarily will um, cause the um, increase in costs we just recently had a new increase coming up starting October 2nd, 2020. You may be aware that certain applications are going to skyrocket, I would say, in, in, the, co in the cost. Applications related to citizenship, certain applications in removal proceedings, waiver applications. And with this new proposal, I think it's reasonable to expect that naturally the money has to come from somewhere to cover the cost of all that. Because they're also going to collect the prints of your eyes. I would explain it like that. It's basically when your eye is scanned and, um, you know, it's, it's a, it creates a particular identification and prints of your palms as well. All that requires, of course, technology and storage information and uh, you know, storage capacity and, and so on and so forth. So that's where we stand right now. Right now, it's just a proposal. I think for an average person, it wouldn't really change the situation much, apart from this um, sort of uncomfortable thing when your uh, personal identification information will be now stored and shared potentially between the different law enforcement agencies, which of course in the United States is a big concern concern for person's privacy. You may know if you're following the news that, for example, in Portland, um, just now, city council voted to prohibit the use of facial recognition, okay? Because in the United States, privacy, uh, personal privacy, pr privacy of a person is a big concern. So that's why uh, various um, civil rights organizations here are opposing the proposal. All right, because of course my channel is suited for the immigrants and um, in certain countries, basically, government doesn't ask you if you want to, you don't want to, to provide your fingerprints. Uh, but here is a, usually is a different situation. And now if you guys have some questions, I'll be very happy to answer them. Hi, Fenella. Hi, Joanne. Hi, Azim. So let me see. Are U.S. citizen spouses given consideration for interview before December? Not getting a defense answer from USCIS Mumbai when I wrote an email, nor USCIS website says anything clearly as per presidential proclamation. Um, citizens of the U.S. spouses are not, I'm sorry, 
<laughs> spouses of the U.S. citizens are not banned from coming to the United States. But I'm not aware of any preferences, okay, that would be afforded to them. So I believe it's being decided on a case-by-case -case basis. I know from other attorneys that if you would like to expedite your case, you have to contact your consulate and explain why you would like your spouse to be interviewed as soon as possible. I hope this will help you. Hi, Shapan. Please, how long the process takes to bring a brother to the United States? I'm a U.S. citizen. In short, it would take you forever. <laughs> In practice, it's going to take you about eight to 10 years minimum, okay? Because this is the longest preference category. You can verify the wait time on the Department of State website. I believe it's F4 category uh, on a visa bulletin. And you will see that the wait time is, is crazy. It's basically about 10 years. Do I need a lawyer to fasten the process? A lawyer will not be able to speed up the process, guys. A lawyer can only make sure that the forms um, are submitted correctly, okay, that uh, to help you with the procedural issues, the lawyer cannot speed up this wait line. It's, it's just impossible. Can you still get work permit if your asylum case is administratively closed by USCIS? Is there any way we can reopen this case? I do not believe you can get a work permit if your case was administratively closed by, uh, by USCIS. I know that if you had administrative closure um, in, um, in, in, uh, in court, you would still qualify for the work permit. But I don't think this is the case for USCIS. That would be my first, my first guess. Can you reopen the case? Well, I think the best thing to do is to talk to your attorney. I believe what happens, why would your case be administratively closed? I think perhaps it's because USCIS says that they don't have jurisdiction over your case. So I think you should talk with your lawyer about this situation. You probably have to file your case with with, with immigration court, but that would be my guess, okay? Hi, Asma. How long does it take to have your, uh, to take, uh, to receive your citizenship? Well, after filing, okay, your citizenship application, I would, if I had to guess, it usually takes about nine months if, if everything is okay, between the time USCIS accepted your forms and the time of your interview. Of course, there can be delays, delays out of your control, cancellations. Um, there may be a need for an additional investigation, right? Sometimes, and this may, may slow down the process, but usually I would say it's less than a year. Okay. Hi, Fionella. I'm waiting for my interview, but because of COVID-19, I don't know if I should contact USCIS about my interview process. You should always feel free to contact USCIS about your interview, right? What's worse that can happen? They're going to say, ma'am, you have to wait. The main, to make sure that you do not miss that interview notice. That's very important, okay? Because some people move and they forget to let USCIS know um, that they moved and the notice goes to their old address. Well, plainly, sometimes you just don't receive, don't receive the notice even though USCIS system says that it was mailed to you. So it would be a good idea for you to, um, to contact USCIS and see what's happening if they ever sent you the notice. Also, if it's a notice for the citizenship, you should know that USCIS at some point announced that their goal is to reschedule everybody who was scheduled previously for the interview um, within 90 days, okay? And I believe this announcement was made in August. So I calculated that by November, the latest, you should, all people who were canceled previously due to COVID should receive new notices. 
all right so it's always i would say it's a good idea to stay on top of your case right because that's very important to to receive an interview and hopefully to get your documents uh hi uh, uh hi john i have applied for asylum in march 2020 and i didn't receive biometrics and still waiting <clears throat> my question is is it true that whoever applied before may they were going to backlog and what's what is my next step to accelerate my case? All right, John, have you received a confirmation a notice of receipt? If you have received notice of receipt, I would say that nothing to worry about. The government knows about you. They accepted your asylum application. You're going to be okay. Many people did not receive uh, notices for fingerprints in connection with the asylum application. That's okay. Um, is it true that the cases went backlog? Well, you know, I guess due, due to COVID, USS was closed, right? But they're slowly reopening. And I know that they started calling people for the interview for asylum cases. So I would say that you should be you should be getting ready and make sure that you have your receipt. That's very, very important receipt for your asylum claim because we experienced very long delays receiving those receipts um okay so the consulates that are open now guys do not have a list of the consulates that are open now i know consulate in jamaica is open that i know for a fact because i have a client who is going to have the interview very soon there but you basically have to check you know with with your consulate that of your interest when is federal plaza is going to open please oh federal plaza is opened for uh, USAS appointments, right? Uh, for um, emergency appointments. If you are asking when the courts are going to start um, operating again for non-detained people, I do not know yet, okay? I know that all hearings up to September 25th are currently postponed. That's as much as I know, but that's about that. All right, so... Um, that's about all the questions I'm able to answer today. Thank you very much for joining me. I hope those answers were uh, helpful. And uh, please like, share my videos, and uh, I hope to see you soon.